Hey guys, Tyler here from Gaming Next Stage, bringing you another episode of Scary Story Time. I'm not saying true anymore, because I can't really find any good true in scary stories anymore, so I'm just going to find some good scary stories and read them every Saturday. So, hopefully it's still as enjoyable, and if it's not true enough for you, I'm sorry. But, let's start. This story is called... The Devil's Movie. You have all probably seen the movie, Ring. So before one real-life incident, I was sure that it was nonsense, and a movie tape cannot kill a person. I was wrong. This happened three months ago. It all started when someone brought a movie called Jeepers Creepers to my birthday party. We all love this movie. So we decided to watch it. But instead of the movie, a bunch of nonsense came on the screen. It showed a room all covered in blood. A lot of blood on the walls, ceiling, and floor. There was no furniture in the room. Only one large vintage-style mirror hanging on the wall. Strangely, the mirror was not at all splattered with blood. There was very low light in that room. That is why we didn't immediately notice two things. On one of the walls, it was written in blood, You will be dead. And in the mirror, there was a reflection of a handsome man, although the room was empty. That lasted for about five minutes. Nothing was happening. We were about to turn off the TV when suddenly the man raised his hand and said, almost inaudibly, Anna, I need to let you know that there were four of us. Anna, Alex, Lisa, and Peter. Why am I using past tense? Because they are all dead. All but me. But I know it is coming for me too. I'm sure of it. Let's get back to that evening. Anna got very scared, and we began laughing and reassuring her, saying that it's all silly coincidence and that she should forget about it. Anna was always interested in mysticism and was sure that it's not a silly coincidence and that something bad was supposed to happen. She said she wanted to go home. We never saw her after that. Only three days later, they found her body floating in the river but the police said that it did not look like a murder. We were all stunned. Anna would never commit suicide. It's been two weeks since that horrible day. I was cleaning in my room, and I found the DVD in my closet. I decided to watch it again. Everything was the same, but now the man uttered the name, Alex. I started to panic. I ran to the phone dialed Alex's number, and told him to immediately come to my house. When Alex came, I told him everything about what I saw a half an hour ago. But Alex said that it was still... But Alex said that I was still under the impression of everything that had happened recently, and it was all in my head. He said that he would go home, and on the way will throw this movie in the nearest garbage can. He told me to stay home and go about my day, and he left. Four days later, I received a call from Peter, who told me that Alex was gone. He was found hanged in his living room. At the same time, he had cuts on his wrists, but the police did not find any traces of a murder. To them, it looked like suicide. At his funeral, I heard his aunt said that the DVD player, they found a strange disc. And there was a man in that video who said quietly, Lisa. I looked at Lisa, and I saw how she got all pale. We decided to go home together. As we walked down the street, we had the following dialogue. I think it is all about the disc, Lisa said. Where is this coming from? After the death of Alex, I hear someone calling my name. And in my dreams, I see that man. He calls for me. He tells me that I will like it here. 
that my friends and my family are waiting for me. And, you mean he pushes you to commit suicide? I interrupt her. But it's silly. It's just a coincidence. Although I did not believe it myself. But Lisa, as if read my mind, and she said, Do not try to calm me down, Kate. You understand everything pretty well. You heard what Alex's aunt said. He'll still take me to him. Thank you for everything. This was our last meeting. It's been three weeks since the death of Lisa. All these days I've lived in fear, knowing that soon he will come for me. One evening I was sitting, watching TV, and suddenly my phone rang. I looked at the number. Peter. Shiver ran down my spine, but I decided to pick up the phone. Peter? I watched that disc again. He said my name. He's waiting for me. Now I realize that Anna, Alex, and Lisa committed suicide. It was not murder. Now he's coming for me. He is the devil. He will take our souls. We will all die. I heard short beeps. That's it. I realize that he will not rest until he kills us all. Then I gather some courage and ran to Peter's place. He was nowhere to be found. Only in his room, the TV was working. And on the screen, there was that man. Rather, the devil. I saw those cold, evil eyes. He was looking at me. I ran home. Peter's body was found in the woods. It was disfigured beyond recognition. I'm scared. It's been three months since we first watched that DVD. I'm not afraid anymore. I do not care. The last two days, I've been hearing my name at night. I see those cold eyes, that devil in human form. He is calling for me. This story is called, I Work at NASA, and today is my first mission. Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel, and I work for NASA. I have recently completed all of my training at the organization, and I'm proud to say that my first mission will be happening today. I'm making logs to document my progress, and this one's sort of a pre-mission kind of recording. Soon I'll be shipping out to explore the vast unknown. Let me tell you, getting to where I am right now wasn't easy. I was the sole person out of three dozen candidates to make it through the entire training process. At first, training was pretty easy. Just gene generic mental training, what rocks to be careful of, protocol if you get trapped in a crater, how to record data, what to do if you encounter another life form, simple stuff like that. The next part of our training was the physical aspect. These tests included withstanding extreme temperatures, getting used to breathing in different air densities, and moving around in irregular gravitational fields. I'll admit this part was pretty tough. I didn't expect them to be so liberal with the temperature gauge, but I guess it's good to be prepared for anything. Everyone who didn't fail during the physical training was then subject to the final series of trials, the psychological endurance. Most corporations would usually tackle psychological trials separately, but here at NASA, our torture, no, scratch that, training, our training is a package deal. We were made to experience darkness, isolation, and complete silence all at once in our own personal walk-in closet-sized hell holes. We were also given just enough food and water for survival. At the end of the three-day period, I was the only person who emerged from my tomb with my sanity still intact. So there you have it. All my training is going to pay off soon. I just have to wait for them to... Wait, did you hear that? I think they stopped chanting. 
That must mean the ritual is finally complete. It's almost time to descend. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm ready for this. I did all that training. After all, I'm afraid it's time to end my first log, my friends. This is Gabriel, proud member of the Natural National Association of Satan's Apostles and Primary Voyage to the Grand Kingdom of Hell, signing off. I'll see you on the other side.